You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to episode 69 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia horror edition this is brandon this is brad this is nick so today what we got for you guys like brandon (laughs) (laughs) i guess we got goofy sound effects made by brandon (laughs) uh we've got treasure hunting we've got top five fears uh we got some scary moments in our life that we're going to tell you about uh we also got some vacation tales and brandon has another box art trivia game So it's going to be a long episode, and it's going to be very fun. So let's get started with quote time. How sweet, fresh meat. It's probably a horror movie. I don't... It's it's not my specialty. uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, Dream Master. (laughs) Do you remember what part he says that? When Alice arrives. When he sees... When... Kristen brings Alice into the dream, and he's all getting <laughs> heck of his Freddy boner on because yeah. there's some fresh meat coming out that he's going to get. <laughs> heck of tight. And with Alice's dreams, bring a whole new gang of teenagers that he could kill and torture. There's new characters every movie, right? I mean, do, do any characters actually go from one to the other? Yeah, Alice does. Oh, okay. Part four and five. And Nancy, part one, three, and then seven. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Kincaid and Joey and Tristan from 3 to 4. But, um... God to, damn. To, I just don't understand how you memorize all their character names. Uh, Tuesday they die every time. <laughs> uh, Tuesday night had to take over for Patricia Arquette because Patricia Arquette, the Kristen for part 3, didn't want to be in part 4. <laughs> she, like, blew up too fast or something and was like, I don't want to do another nightmare on Elm Street. I just want to do classy movies. <laughs> Bitch. Yeah, totally. You know if, uh, what's her brother's name? Will Arquette? He would have been like, yeah, I'll totally do some Freddy movies. Isn't there a, a Arquette that's a transgender? Yes, there is. Oh, man. And who's that? Patricia? Did she go to No, it, <laughs> it wasn't Patricia. It was another one. I remember Howard Stern talking about it, though. Uh, yeah. Isn't it, is Joey Arquette related? Or am I thinking of someone else? It might be. I'm Isn't sure that the are. guy who married uh, Courtney Cox and was in that Ready to Rumble movie? That was Will. Oh, that's Will Arquette? Yeah. Oh, for some reason I thought his name was Joey. Yeah. He's heck of tight. He's, he was in Scream as well. But, <laughs> uh, for for sure, you guys got to watch the Nightmare on Elm Street series again. You got to watch it once a year. It's the best <laughs> horror series ever made. <laughs> Especially the documentary, Never oh, Sleep man. Again. It's a eight-hour documentary that goes over all the films. Oh, man. And it's, uh, and, like, everyone came back. Even Johnny Depp came back to talk about it, but guess who didn't? Patricia Arquette. <laughs> what a cunt, I she, swear. She was not in that. I'm getting a horror boner just talking about this stuff. <laughs> so cool, quote time. Did you have a... YouTube video that you wanted to recommend? Yeah, uh, Ninja Gaiden Part 4, uh, Brad's playthrough. It's it's hilarious. I, I only heard him drink water once throughout that whole playthrough. And that, was a, <laughs> that was the first video. I almost was like, I'm just going to watch this on mute and then tell Brad about it and then make him feel bad. But I was like, no, I'll just sit through it. And he didn't do it anymore. I haven't watched those yet. I really need to watch them. I'm still catching up after my vacation. We'll talk about that later, though. Yes. Game of the week. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, So I played Ninja (laughs) Gaiden last week. Uh, Pretty fun game. Uh, I actually did a YouTube recording on it, so go ahead and check that out on our YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, I love that game. It just requires so much skill, and once you get it down, it's like you just feel like a real ninja playing that game. (laughs) Did you feel like a real ninja watching it? Not really. Oh. I wish I, I wish I could say yes, but... You just I, should have said yes. Oh. Yes, I did. <laughs> Leave that in. <laughs> I played a little Ghosts and Goblins on oh, that's Halloween. Tight. Oh, yeah. I fucking sucked at it. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, I went over to Brad's on Friday night for his son's birthday party. 
and uh, he wanted to have some sort of like a gothic type game on it because it was Halloween. And right when I walked in, I saw Ghosts and Goblins. I think you were on like the fifth or sixth level sixth or something level, like that. Yeah. And you you weren't there. Uh, your son Jordan entered the door, so he just let me in. I was like, "What is this?" And I picked up the controller. I was dead in like <laughs> five seconds. <laughs> so I started from the beginning, and I could barely get past level one. Brad Brad kind of gave me some tips, and I I, I was eventually kind of getting used to it. But man, that's a that's a really tough game. <laughs> That red devil is a beast. <laughs> yeah, he look, told he told me that I need to like jump away from it and shoot like kind of like do fadeaway jump shots <laughs> as I'm uh, uh, jumping away from the red devil, and I took that strategy and it worked. But that's that's a hard game. Yeah, I set it up on Halloween and I was getting ready for Logan's party. I took that day off, and I was just sitting there with the blinds open and, and it started pouring. That's so tight. And I was sitting there playing it. I was like, "Oh, this is fucking awesome!" <laughs> what, and what were you playing? Ghosts and oh, Goblins. Okay. I I just wanted to play through it again. I beat it the first time, and then that's what I got up to level six uh, the second time and paused it. And then Nick started. Uh, he started again. I didn't care or anything. It's just I figured I, you wouldn't care. It's yeah. not, it's not like you play that game quite a bit. Yeah. And then I sat down and beat it again in like 20 minutes or so. Oh, okay. The first time. I didn't play through it the second time. And yeah, I was telling Brad when he was playing through it, like, he kept on dying in these spots. He's like, oh, it's okay. I just wanted to get rid of that red devil right there. Because I yeah. guess when you regenerate, the red devil doesn't reappear. I was like, oh, okay. Because I was <laughs> under the impression that when you played that game, like, if you continued, it would start you at the very beginning of the game. And he was like, no, nah, it just starts you at the beginning of the level that you're on. No, at the checkpoint even. The checkpoint? Yeah. So even easier then. Yeah, I was telling him there's no really use for continues because it's just like dying. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And there's one part that Nick found him using on level two, you know, the town with mm -hmm. the goblins. Well, right where there's a ladder I was going up, going to go down, there was a torch and I didn't want to get the fire. <laughs> so then I just climbed to the top. <laughs> And I was jumping at the edge of the town until a bird came by and I made myself get hit and I bounced off all the way down. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, why'd you get hit? I was like, I just didn't want to get the, the fire. fire sucks. <laughs> it does, but level three, it actually helps. On level three, too, you have to fight four red devils before you could even get to the boss. Oh, yeah, you saw that, huh? Yep. Fucking red devils. They're little assholes. They just march around looking all like proud like they're they know they're gonna kill you <laughs> oh assholes they do this yeah <laughs> Swing their arms back and forth. like a pirate yeah <laughs> do you have a game of the week yeah, oh yeah i finished playing the amazing spider-man 2 for playstation 4 and said i've got 83 percent of the trophies i'm not going to go back and get the rest the controls on the game is horrible uh, like when you're swinging through the city, you actually have to be by a building for him to attach his web to. Oh, that's stupid. Oh, it sucks. I mean, it's cool once you get it down, but I don't like it. So I'm just gonna I, I'm gonna give that back to Matt. And I've started playing The Evil Within, a horror game. Uh, I don't, don't really want to talk too much about it because I want it to be fresh for when Brad and Nick go to play it. I'm not playing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Playing The Last of Us on the hardest difficulty really prepared me for this game. Because I'm playing on the hardest difficulty right now that I can. That you can, yeah. Because you probably have to beat it to get a harder the, one. To get Nightmare. But I conserve ammo so much in this game because of Last of Us psychology that it's uh, pretty. It's fun and it's pretty, uh pretty good game. I really like it. Cool. So we got some treasure hunting, huh? We do. I fucking... Gain like twelve levels mm -hmm. in uh, hunting this week. That's heck of tight. I gained like one. <laughs> oh. Before you start, I have a contribution. Oh, what, what? is this? I went to. Uh, can it? Can it? Does it yeah. pick me up? Okay. Yeah. I went to Dimple yesterday for. Uh, I was getting a birthday gift for my brother-in-law Tim. Which one did you go to? Citrus Heights. Okay. So I tr I tried to put my treasure hunting cap on. I was going through all the gray gold that they had there. I couldn't find anything that met your criteria. Uh -huh. Found one game that met your criteria. The it has to be double its uh -huh. value or bu double what it's what you're buying it for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> double dribble <laughs> for ninety nine cents. <laughs> it was. It, I checked the uh, price chart. It was like three ninety nine on price chart. So Sick. That's my con contribution to you guys. That's awesome. So I'm just going to reroll mine and get it out of the way. I do have one gem in here. 
Here's my first one. It's Dreamcast. Tony Hawk Pro Skater. For $2.99. That's worth awesome. eight. Wow. Bundle! Oh, wow. Tony Hawk 2 for Dreamcast. How worth it? nine. And finally... This game is so sick. It's Wild Arms 2 for PlayStation. Uh, do you have this at your house? Because we, we've had a copy and um, I don't know where it went. I don't know. I might. What's this worth? 32. That's sick. That's hecka tight. I love this game. It's so fun. So you get to steal one of them. So much. I got the random number generator app. Fine. Okay, so one, two, and three, right? Yep, I got it. Just D four. Look. Ah. Uh, oh yes, Tony Hawk two. How much was that worth? Uh, nine. Okay. So Brandon got to use his still a treasure and stole Tony Hawk Pro Skater two. All right, I guess I could start revealing some of mine. So with this first game, I hope to see a playthrough, a video playthrough on it. A video playthrough. Yes. Okay. Rostan, what? That was one on our top arcade games. My top number three. Oh, it's for Master System yeah. though. Yours doesn't play your your thing doesn't play Master System. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sucks. I didn't know it's for Master System. Yeah. How much is that worth? Uh, Rostan is worth twelve dollars loose. Wow, that's hecka tight. Yes. Dang, too bad I didn't have the Master System. I know. Check this one out. This is also for the Master System, I think. Oh, Rampage! Huh. Yeah, playing on the Sega Master System. That's 10 bucks loose. Mysterious. Oh, it's a black <laughs> box. For four dollars. Ooh, Alex Kid, how much is that worth? Loose fourteen. Wow. Ooh, Mario Party six. That was a dimple find. Or a goodwill. Remember when I said I got uh the... Yeah. Was that ten dollars? Five. Oh, how much is that worth? Uh thirty. Dang. Atari? Nope. ColecoVision. ColecoVision. <laughs> Qbert with the hella jacked up label. <laughs> That's word 13. Wow. ColecoVision. Frogger. Eight bucks. Ooh, Sega. <laughs> Shaq Fu. <laughs> That's tight. It's worth like four bucks. Four or five. I'm going to play it. Maybe I'll have Tim over and Nick and we could play it. That'd be fun. Oh, what's this? Shove it! <laughs> <laughs> Shove it. The warehouse game. It looks like it's a puzzle game. Where you move, like, you, you'll cargo need, boxes around. You'll need brains and brawn to have these mind-bending puzzles. <laughs> This is Genesis game. Is it complete? I, yeah, I've never heard of it. Yeah, complete. It is twelve bucks. Hmm. What is that? <laughs> it's got like a USB. Is it like a Game, game. Shark? So I'm thinking Game yeah. Shark. Twenty five cents a dimple. Oh, for the Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, that's again sixty four. How does it work? Eighteen. What's that USB thing? Or it looks like a printer. Right here? Input or something like that on the back. I don't know. Like, that looks like what you would plug a printer into or a monitor or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm guessing you plug this in the system, then the game on top of here. But I don't know what that's for. That's pretty cool. Wonder Boy! <laughs> Wonder Boy! Master System. It's 15 loose, 40 complete. I used to play this game with my Uncle Sam. Really? Yeah. 
That's cool. Does he have the book still? My Uncle Sam is deceased. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You did mention that before. What? A Luigi Mansion at the Goodwill? Nope. Where? Dimple? Nope. Where? Remember that cabin we went to? Yeah. That it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was stuck in between some of the DVDs. I figured he wouldn't miss it. How much is that worth? <laughs> They're stealing. <laughs> Twenty-four. Damn. <laughs> uh oh oh Zelda 2 The Adventure Link for Game Boy Advance is that like 10? Uh, something like that is that everything? that's everything wow that's a mother load right there yeah I gotta give a shout out to Daniel Middaw he was at the um Goodwill on Arden, and he sent me a message, a Facebook message. Dimple saying, on Arden. No, good, Goodwill. Oh, here's at the Goodwill? Uh-huh. And he said, there's a lot of Master System and Genesis games up here. Um, I, they're all behind the case, and I don't want, and I can't see them all. So, I was like, all right, I'll come up there and check it out. As I was putting on my pants to rush out the door. Tight. Good, good thing I did. So, let's get this punishment out of the way. Eleven Shockmaster. <laughs> Did you bring it? Okay. Yes. Ten Taxi. I'll do the Shockmaster. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's your prize. Nut tap. Death punch times five. I don't want any of those. <laughs> I want to steal a random treasure. Nope, you didn't get it this time. Uh, I'll do a nut tap. Oh, man. <laughs> Can it be simultaneous? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Too bad Tim's not here. I'm sure he wanted to see the nut tap. <laughs> All right, so we'll 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 do it simultaneously and just get it over with. <laughs> All right, so here is the shock master for Brad. He's got the shocks, the shock lead LEDs on his leg. So I'm gonna pump it up to ten. You ready? Yeah. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh! 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 Okay, then turn it off. Oh! 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 Turn it off. Fucker. Oh! 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 Turn it off, dude. I'm not kidding. It's off. Okay. It's been off for like twenty. No, it's on. No, it's not. Oh! Ow! It feels on. I'm taking this shit off. Ow! 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 That was tight. Oh! 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 That was the worst nut tap of my life. Oh! I thought it was funny when he fell None down, of, and then it kept shocking him. <laughs> None of it was funny. <laughs> the, I bet the audience begs to differ. Oh, oh it hurts in my stomach. <laughs> We've got a pretty long episode. We should get rolling. So go ahead and, if you haven't done so already, please like us on Facebook. The more people see us, the, the more it grows. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, all our old podcasts are up on YouTube. So if you're like, hey, there's only like six podcasts on you on iTunes, that's because they're all on YouTube. And don't also don't forget to check out Brad's Kid Icarus and Ninja Gaiden YouTube videos. Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden, however you say it. I like Gaiden. And follow us on Instagram. We just put up some pics of the treasure we found. Brad put up some pumpkin herpes uh, pictures on Instagram <laughs> and a Simon's Quest image of 
What was that picture of? The exchanging ghoul hearts for garlic. That's right. Was it a real ghoul heart? It was a cow heart. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fuck, it still hurts. They're like swelling, like my scrotum has doubled in size. I'm sure Karen will like that. Alright, um, top five? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. This is going to be a fun top five. Woo! You've got to do one more, at least. One more spooky sound effect. Oh, I will. I've got it. I'll keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's roll to see who goes first. Nick gets ten, I get two, and Brandon gets eight. So Nick will start us off. Are you guys familiar with... Yeah, our top five fears. Nick's <laughs> going to start us off. Alright. Are you guys familiar with platophobia? Is that the fear of platypuses? No. Or plantains? No. Of scars? No. Oh. It's the fear of bald people. Oh, man. Every time I go to a basketball game, and I'm a half-season ticket holder for the Sacramento Kings, so I go to a lot of games... I cringe whenever I see a shaved bald head running up and down the court. I blame Stolen Cold Steve Austin for this trend. <laughs> so gross. That's my number five. You really don't like bald people? No. What if it's naturally bald? It's still pretty gross. Oh, man. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> number five for me is going to be public speaking. Uh, the speech impediment that me and Brandon shared when we were little... Get uh made it worse as you could. I don't know if we talked too much about it, but on episode three, and we said our R's as W, so instead of saying Robert, we said Wabut. <laughs> How would you say Frogger now or back then? Fogger. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like Frog Wabba. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this came more true in our sophomore year in high school. We had to memorize Cassius's eulogy from Julius Caesar. And what does it start out with? Friends, woman's country men. <laughs> Lend me your ears. <laughs> I, I stayed home sick for two days before Christmas vacation so I wouldn't have to do it. And then when I went back, Mr. Rissain said, Hey, Bartholomew, you never did your speech, so get up here and do it. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> So I got like halfway through it, and then I was like, that's all I know. So that's my number five, is public speaking. That's actually my number five, too. But I remember doing that speech and not being afraid to do it, I think, because my R's were already fixed. So um, it was funny seeing Sean Dillon do it, though. He did like, I think, four sentences. He had uh, uh, the same speech impediment as we did. But worse. Yeah, because he had the slack jaw going on. So it was, I can't even, wins, women's, countrymen, when me your ears, <laughs> I come to bury Caesar, not to <laughs> praise him. <laughs> but uh, going for my public speaking, I actually took a class in college for public speaking. And you know what my main speech was, my main final speech? Was it Hitler's? No. <laughs> no, we had to make our own speech. What was it? It was on the Dragon Ball Z card game and the Tokiwaza style. <laughs> Take a tight. Yeah, I was sweating through the whole thing, but I ended up getting a B. So I was, that's why it, it w would have been higher up on my list if we would have done this 10 years ago. Yeah. But uh, since I'm better at it now, uh, it it's not as bad, but it's still pretty bad. My number four is chorophobia, the fear of dance. Oh. <laughs> dance. What was your guess? Corals. <laughs> <laughs> Those are pretty freaky. Individuals experiencing this phobia are often unwilling to experience the excitement and the thrill that is associated with any kind of dancing. I would do just about anything to avoid an event where dancing might be involved, which has put a damper on my social life. So that's my number four, the fear of dance, chorophobia. I could count the number of times I've danced in public on one hand with, like, two fingers missing. <laughs> and it's not that I don't like doing it. It's just, like, it's not my thing. Like, I'm my rhythm sucks. Like, 
I guess I've been blessed with this white skin and it just goes to waste with the, without this. Nasty it doesn't rhythm. matter about your rhythm. You just need to have fun. Oh. Uh, I too have, could count on the same number of times I could went dancing, but one time was when you dragged me to the karaoke bar mm -hmm. and you were singing Around the World by Red Hot Chili Peppers and I was kind of like bobbing my head to it. And this one girl, I don't know who she was. Her name was Brittany. She was, uh, you remember Kristen, Dick's girlfriend? It was her best friend, and she just wanted to bang anyone. Dang, she came <laughs> up to me and, like, started grinding on oh, me. Shit. And I was like, no, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, and she left. It's like, what wow. the fuck was up with that? If I had to go do a nod my head and get some pussy, <laughs> what are guys complaining about? <laughs> my number four is the fear of atomic warfare. Uh, our mom and grandma used to torture us to death about this. They used to say that the Cubans are going to bomb us or the Russians are going to drop a bomb on us. And we should be on the lookout for the army men coming up and down the street handing out cyanide pills to those who just want to get it over with. <laughs> we asked our Uncle Robert, who was Matthew's uncle, what he would do in atomic warfare. And he said he would go down in the basement and start praying. I was like, this is fucking deep. This is scaring the shit out of me. <laughs> so just at... I was scared for this for about five years, just about the time I get get it over with, with my fear. You know what movie comes out? Hurt Locker? Terminator 2. Oh, oh man, yeah. That scene in there where the, the fire and everything scared the fucking crap out of me. Yeah. So, that's the thing, is when they said that the army men are going to hand out cyanide to people, and then Terminator 2. Yeah, uh, I remember mom saying that the Russians had missiles underground, like yes. implanted throughout the whole United States, oh, and, all, and all they had to do was press a button, and we would blow up. Oh. And I was like depressed. That was the first time I ever remember being depressed. <laughs> and I was like, um, like for three years, I believed it, and then finally, like years later, I talked to my mom, and she was like, "Oh, I was just kidding." I was like, "Yeah, you didn't fucking tell us that." <laughs> <laughs> she, she forgot to mention that. Oh man. Number four on my list is, I, I don't know the fancy a phobia term <laughs> for it, maybe agoraphobia, but it's the fear of parties and large crowds of people I don't know. Yeah. Being uh, socially awkward my whole life, I can't stand being around a bunch of people with loud music and like, I don't know, 80% of them. It's a horrible experience for me every time, and I hardly go to parties because of it. You just go into a corner. Yeah. And just like, or even like in a hallway where nobody's at. And then they come up to you, like yeah. people come up to you and say, are you okay? Oh, I hate that shit. Oh, man. I just leave that. me the fuck alone. Yeah. I got diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my period. <laughs> my number three is calogenophobia. Germs? No. It refers to an unwarranted fear of beautiful women. Oh, wow. It's commonly suffered by adolescents and men, specifically those who do not have straight orientation. Next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you catch that? He's saying for, like, gay people. <laughs> oh, okay. oh I'm, not, I'm not gay, though. Yeah. <laughs> When my mom had multiple friends when we were little with the same name, they sometimes inherited a nickname. For example, Hey Jenny, I saw Tony at the grocery store. Then my mom would say, Which one? So clearly, you need nicknames for him. There was Wheelchair Tony, mm -hmm. the guy who got shot in the back for cheating on the wrong woman. There was Normal Tony, which was our father. And then there was N-word Tony. <laughs> Don't need to go in detail there. So there was a guy at my apartment complex. His name was Shitbag Jimmy. He had a colostomy bag. <laughs> uh, growing up with Shitbag Jimmy in my life gave me the fear of getting a colostomy bag. <laughs> it was so gross. He was like a bum who never changed his stuff. And I just always had that fear. So my number three is having a colostomy bag. Number three on my list are drops on roller coasters. I could put up with any roller coaster if it goes fast, t turns upside down, loops. I don't care, but as soon as that drop hits, I get that feeling in my stomach. Most people like it, but I can't stand it. 
<laughs> I remember when we went to Six Flags with I went with Nick and Aaron for our graduation in high school. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not afraid of roller coasters anymore. <laughs> first one we go on is a Colossus. <laughs> and that first drop, I was, like, trying to jump out of the uh, the roller coaster. And I, <laughs> and I looked over at Aaron and Nick, and they were laughing and enjoying themselves. And I was like, we're going to die. <laughs> My number two is a rack of Buddha-rophobia. This is a serious affliction that I have to deal with on a daily basis. The fear of having peanut butter stick to the top of my mouth. Being a large man, I do love peanut butter, but I'm constantly dealing with an inner struggle when it comes to peanut butter. Is the sweet joy of peanut butter worth the risk of sounding like a mongoloid due to a clogged <laughs> mouth? Allow me to set the scene and play a clip for you. Dude working at a history museum decides to have a peanut butter sandwich on his lunch break. Seems innocent enough, right? <laughs> He's eating right next to the bullet that was shot from the gun that Aaron Burr used to shoot Alexander Hamilton. This is a true story, by the way. Listen to this. <laughs> he does sound like a mongoloid. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see this is a very serious problem. Something that I just have to deal with on a daily basis. That's my number two. Number two on my list is going to have to be snakes. Uh, my most feared animal alive. If I see one, I could get teary-eyed if it's the right one. Uh, the reason why this didn't make my top list is because there's one thing that I'm frightened more of snakes than ever. But snakes, my, my wife called me one day at work and was like, Brad, there's a snake that's tangled up in the, underneath the bathroom sink. What do you want me to do with it? I said, get rid of it. And she said, well, it's like twisty and turning and it's t stuck on the masking tape, on the duct tape. Oh, was it dead? No, it was alive. And I started tearing up and I was like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and she said, it's a little baby snake. I think we could just grab it. I said, I can't grab it. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I was having a panic attack. <laughs> Call Brandon. Yeah. It, it was horrifying. And then we mowed the grass one time and there was like these snakes running out from my lawn. I couldn't. I'm so glad I don't live in the country anymore. <laughs> snakes are the bane of my existence. <laughs> Number two on my list is a fear of flying. I've been on, I think, six flights and all with Nick. <laughs> no, one, two, three, four, five flights. And they every one of them sucked except for the Los Angeles one. We flew from, That's right. we flew from here to Los Angeles and it was only like a 40 minute flight. And uh, I tried to take like, people suggest taking like Demerol or something. Dramamine? Yeah. That just does like seasickness. Yeah, and it's supposed to make you tired so you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I was it was horrible. I was groggy, the plane kept rocking. <laughs> and I learned to keep my eye on the stewardess as and as long as they were fine, then I, it kind of calmed me. <laughs> and there is a little TV screen on, on our seats of where we could see the route of the plane of, of our destination like we are currently in Ohio, and I was like, four more hours of this. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been flying. I fear it too. But I can't say it's a fear because I've never done it. Oh, uh, you know where. Uh, ahead, sorry. I, it just popped in my head. You know where I got my fear of flying from? La Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing that airplane explode over and over again when we used to watch it, I think that's where it came from. <laughs> 
Uh, so I have a confession to make. I don't really suffer from any of the aforementioned phobias. However, this one I do have at least a mild case of arachnophobia. <laughs> I've been witness to this. <laughs> <laughs> this phobia, phobia is not fucking irrational. It's goddamn biological. Spiders kill people and can cause great bodily harm. It is human nature to be wary of things that can fucking kill you. I used to have nightmares about spiders, and when I woke from them, I couldn't go to my mommy's bed because I was scared that spiders would be crawling all over the ground to get me. Brandon's witnessed this firsthand on a camping trip, like right after high school, I think it was. Yeah. There was a spider in one of our tents, and I would not go in that fucking tent. No, you were in it. Oh. Um, what happened was, uh, you were like, we were all sitting by the fire, and... Um, you were like, I'm going to go to bed. I was like, all right. And so I'm walking. After, like, you go. And then like an hour later, I decide, all right, my shoes are getting all melty from the fire. So I'm going to walk back. <laughs> and I see the light on. And you're like, you had a flashlight. Like, oh, oh, that's what it was. You're right. And I'm like, oh, man, I hope he's not like touching himself. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this on episode 12 with Aaron. <laughs> yeah. And then so I unzip it. And you have a flashlight in one hand and a shoe in another. And you're in the corner. And you're like, there's a spider in here. <laughs> and then I eventually found it and, and killed it and got rid of it. Was it as big as I thought it was? It was pretty big. I thought it was fucking big. I was like, what the fuck is that? I, I, it's, I've seen bigger in my day. But um, it was... It was not a baby spider or a daddy long leg. <laughs> I, I do remember going in the other tent like after that because I don't remember. I think once you got there, you must have started looking for it and I left. Or yeah, something. and then I found it and then <laughs> the next night we didn't sleep in that tent. We slept in Joe's tent. <laughs> that's what I remember. Yeah, he had like a nine-man tent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's my number one, arachnophobia. I do have a mild case of arachnophobia. I have held a, a tarantula though. I went to the state fair one year. And they were they had a tarantula on display, and they were allowing people to hold it, and I held it. So, I think that allowed me to get over some of my fear. Mm. It's tight. Number one on my list is fear of heights. That's I'm, my number one. I'm not even gonna lie, heights scare the shit out of me. <laughs> I've got a few scary moments in my life that I'll go over on our next segment. But when I get high up, even if it's on the second floor at work, it's a balcony, and I look down, I'll get scared. I'm leaning over the railing, and it's just like one floor. Yeah. That's like when we went to um, M Grill, and we were uh, <laughs> we were only like twelve feet up on the second story, and then I look over, and then I like get that that sickening feeling in my stomach, and then I I try to play it off and grab the well and rock walk down, but Nick caught me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I saw that shit. <laughs> he was like, Why are you hesitating, Brandon? <laughs> And we went to the, remember that prison in Pennsylvania? Yeah. They, that happened there, too. We went, just went up a little flight of stairs, mm -hmm. and on the way down, I think because those stairs were pretty steep, and it was narrow, and it was rickety. The know. escalators at Universal Studios. I don't even want to talk about those. <laughs> They're like 100 feet escalators. Yeah. Who does that? It's so know. scary. If you look backwards, I'd probably fall down and faint. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't even. Want to, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> so before we get into our next segment, I do have a few bonus nicknames that Mom and Okron gave people for my number three. There is N word Carl, <laughs> and they wouldn't say N word. They'd say the real name for it. Nice. Indian PD. Sandy the Dyke. <laughs> I don't remember that one. The one who wrote, had the big rig and missing teeth. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Larry Leglock. <laughs> For this one guy who we asked to help him move is one of my mom's friends, and he said his leg was locking up. So my mom gave him Larry <laughs> Leglock. Congo mm -hmm. from Michelle. Crazy Carlton. Gay Rick. <laughs> Richard Bighead. Richard Bighead. Gato and Paint Sniffer. I don't remember that guy. The guy from Carter's house, he was on Cops. He was, oh, they, yeah. he was a bum. They call him Paint Sniffer because he liked to sniff paint. So those are the bonus nicknames for you guys. Scary moments? Do you have any in your life? I've almost drowned once or twice, and that was pretty fucking scary. Yeah. I, I don't really remember much about it because I was pretty young. I was trying to cross from 
a beach to like this little island at uh, Bucks Lake or no, it was Lake Berryessa, which is near Vacaville in California. And uh, all my cousins were there on my mom's side of the family. So there was like six kids and a couple of adults, my mom and her sister, which would be my aunt, obviously. And I was, we, we were all fully clothed. We like, we didn't have like swimsuits on and we were crossing this from the beach to this island and we thought it was shallow enough where we could just walk walk across and I just fell to this area where it got deep for some reason and because I had my shoes on I, I couldn't swim I kept on I kept on jumping up somehow and just saying hey help hey help and eventually my mom and came and got me but that was pretty scary because I thought that might have been it <laughs> I had a similar situation happen to me when I was like three it was at a lake too, and they were trying to go across. And out, my cousins were riding on a giant log, like to get across. And I was on it too, and I was just hanging on, but I fell off. And all the only thing I remember is just seeing light from above me, wow. and then nothing else. I, I, the next thing I remember is being on a beach picking my nose. <laughs> There's so much water up there. Oh really? Yeah. So that's mm. pretty scary. Were you? Did you ever get stuck on an island with snakes? That was you. It was me. Okay. At the bridge house. Yeah. And I, I had a scary moment happen last night. Oh, wow. That's pretty recent. Yeah, this morning, actually. <laughs> Nausea's been having uh, issues with sleep paralysis, like, over the past few weeks. She'd uh, wake up, go back to sleep, and around 4 o'clock in the morning, she'd try to wake up and wouldn't be able to move. So, yesterday, she went over uh, to her aunt's house, and I was... Um, I was Willie's gone, too, but... Last night, I went to bed, and I woke up around 3, and the hour changed back. And so Jamila was wide awake, so she turned on the TV, and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I went in, into the living room. I was like, man, it's cold in here. So I went into Naja's room and got her blanket and went and fell asleep in the living room. And then I woke up, and then I saw, like, the uh, I was laying my head on the couch, and I saw the arm of the couch. And then I, and then, like, I got up. And then woke up again. So I kept, and then like, after I finally woke up, because it looked like I was watching myself trying to wake up, but I couldn't move. I've had that happen to me a couple times. So then I, uh, finally I woke up and I couldn't move for like five minutes. And finally I was able to get up and go back to bed. But, uh, I told Naja that today and she's like, it's probably my blanket. It's haunted. <laughs> like maybe, but I don't know. Just <laughs> a big coincidence. One moment I had that was scary was, well, I have two. One was in, when I was in Disneyland, and I went on the Tower of Terror ride, and I, <laughs> and I didn't know what it was. I, I, I saw Twilight Zone. Oh, awesome. So me and my brother-in-law went, and he purposely didn't tell me what it was. So I'm riding on the, you sit down in this elevator thing, and you're like, oh, this is fun. We're going up. And then all of a sudden, they open the windows, <laughs> and you're... People are like, ants, they're so small. And then you just <laughs> drop. I grabbed onto Aaron's pant leg. I almost ripped his pants off. I was so scared. And they do it to you like 12 times. I hated that ride. I've never went on it again. And the next one is the from the birth of my first son, Jordan. <clears throat> do you guys know what an episiotomy is? Yep. It sucks dick. Ah. So I, I was sitting there watching the head crown and everything i was like oh this is so awesome and that doctor says nope not gonna fit i was like oh what are they gonna do he grabbed some scissors pushed the head back up and cut my wife's vagina all oh, the way down does karen want you to t say this on a podcast yeah, she, don't, she don't care <laughs> and she said she that my face turned pale white and i felt like i was gonna pass out because I was like, what the fuck is that? And they were cutting all the way down. And I was like horrified. Because I don't know why they were doing it. But that's the fucking scariest thing I've seen in my life. Was, was she on drugs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she had she had the episiotomy. No, epidural. Yeah. And, oh, man. Yeah. Oh. It was pretty bad. It was rough. I, I don't want to ever see one of that happen again. And I guess with the cesareans, she had a cesarean with Logan. I guess they take your intestines out and put them on, 
like move him out of the way. What? I'm mm-hmm. so glad I didn't fucking see that. I, I would probably see that. I would have probably shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> you should have stuck it out. It would have been good for a uh, good pod. I I didn't know about. They put like a tarp up so you can't see what they're doing. You could only see the top half of your wife. Wow. I didn't want to look over there because I would have passed out seriously. Like I could watch horror movies and all that stuff, but when like real people are hurt, I don't think I could watch that shit unless I'm doing the pain. So Brandon finally watched Django Unchained after it's been out for like two or three years. So what was your take on it? Uh, so if you don't know, the film Django Unchained uh, is made by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> uh, it follows a black slave, Django, who's played by Jamie Foxx, and an English-speaking German bounty hunter posing as a traveling dentist, Christoph Waltz. He's my favorite character. His name is... Doctor, awesome and everything. Yes, he is. His name is Dr. King Schultz. In exchange for helping Schultz collect a large bounty on three outlaws uh, that he has never seen, but Django has, uh, Schultz buys and then promises to free Django after they catch the outlaws following the following spring. Schultz subsequently promises to teach Django bounty hunting and split the bounties with them if Django assists him in hunting down other outlaws throughout the winter. Django agrees on the condition that they also locate and free his long-lost wife, Brunhilda, from her cruel plantation owner, Leonardo DiCaprio. Mr. Candy. Yeah, uh, Monsieur Candy. Uh, I think casting Jamie Foxx as a lead was a brilliant move on Tarantino's part, I hate to say it, for the simple fact that it got a ton of people who would not normally see this movie go watch this movie. There were a lot of people that didn't like the movie because of, for the most part, it was those types of people's first Tarantino movies. And it takes a certain mind to enjoy his films. You can't go about making a film in that era, the slavery era, without using the word nigger. Or if you go into this movie with no preconceived notions and are offended by that word, you will most likely not enjoy this movie at all. I would have been very disappointed if Tarantino had not used this word to its fullest ability like it had been used in the South back in the 1800s. Most directors would skirt around the word and maybe throw it in for shock value here and there, but not Tarantino. It was shocking, but it subsided the longer the movie went on. The music for this uh, movie was superb. Uh, Western theme mixed with a little bit of R&B was cool, but there was a rap song in the end when Django is unleashed, when he unleashes his fury that I didn't care for. I didn't think it fit the, the theme of the movie. Uh, country sucks it's different from western music uh, if you didn't know that uh, my favorite characters was Christoph Waltz and as Dr. Kim Schultz Sam Jackson as Steven the house nigger and Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> as monster Calvin Candy I thought Sam Jackson was hecka funny when he kept he was like he acted like the oldest white person in the movie yeah, he was a bastard yeah I think one of my my uh, there's two scenes that I really enjoy in this movie. It's when spoiler alert, uh, Monsieur Calvin Candy's sister gets shot. He says say goodbye, and then Steven says goodbye, Miss Candy, and then he shoots her and she flies off the screen. <laughs> that was hilarious. And then the whole baghead discussion scene was hilarious with Jonah Hill. Uh, oh yeah, that was fun. Don Johnson. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> And uh, overall, I've really enjoyed this movie, and it's one of my favorite Tarantino movies. Did you hear about Will Smith? Yeah, he didn't want to do it. Because he he wanted to be the one to kill Candy. Fucking asshole. Fresh Prince needs to grow up. (laughs) But that was a a pretty good review. Okay, so Nick went to Vegas, and here's his takeaways. All right, so my brother-in-law, Tim, and I went to Vegas for a week, uh, a couple weeks ago now. Um, I was on a limited budget. Uh, We were staying at a resort, which was located half a mile off the strip, I guess. Uh, I didn't spend too much time in casinos. I've already been to Vegas a few times, so I didn't need to do all the touristy type stuff. Most of my time, honestly, was stayed at the resort playing online poker, watching WWE Network, 
When I got tired of that, I played Last of Us. That fucking game is fucking long, dude. I don't know how you got through it in a week. I, I played it probably like seven, eight hours while I was there. And I'm still only like 61% of the way through it. Man, I, I really do enjoy the game, but it's it's long. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through Chrono Trigger. If it took you guys 40, it's probably going to take me 80. Uh, I had a lot of good dinners there. Usually what I do uh, when I go on vacation is I like to have my breakfast and lunch uh, at, at whatever resort I'm staying at. I usually go to a grocery store right when we get there and get all the those meals out of the way. And then I like to go out for dinner. So uh, a couple of notable dinners. The uh, second night I was there, we went to a Brazilian steakhouse called Pampas, which was located in the uh, the Planet Hollywood Mall. So fucking good. Compares to M Grill, probably not quite as good as M Grill, but it was still very good. Did they have stroganoff? They did not have stroganoff. Oh, that's the deciding factor. They didn't right have there. chicken hearts either. Oh. <laughs> they did have pineapple though, so that was very. Did happy it tasted about that. the same. It wasn't quite as good. It didn't have that brown sugar stuff on there. Oh come on! But I did put the salt on there, and it, uh-huh. it made it taste really good. Come on, Papas. <laughs> Pompas. Pompas. Come on, Pompas. <laughs> I don't want to say anything bad about Pompas. I love Pompas. I thought it was very good. We also went to the uh, Tournament of Kings at the Excalibur, which we've talked about before. It's basically medieval times, done a little bit differently with the, the stories a little bit different. We managed to finagle our way into the uh, the dragon section, so that was a lot of fun. How did you do that? Just ask. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you did the same method as... Yeah, we went to that little... The, there's a booth that uh, sells discount tickets if you're buying them for the same day. So we did that. Uh, you have to go exchange them at the Excalibur, which is where the Tournament of Kings is hosted. And I just asked them to put us in the dragon section. They're like, well, if we do that, you're going to be four rows up, whereas the other ones, you'd probably be two rows up. We're like, Whatever, we yeah. just want to be in the dragon section. Was Tim rooting for dragons? Oh, yeah. Tim had a good, great time. He was... He'd never been to medieval times, so mm. it was a whole new experience for him. Did Dragon win the cheering? Yeah, they did. <laughs> I want to say something, but I don't want to offend. I, I used the word mongoloid earlier, but there actually was a mongoloid in the Dragon section. I think I posted a picture of it on Facebook. He was a, I don't know, probably 12, 13-year-old kid. He was having so much fun. I, I was having a blast watching him. Mm. And after the show, they allowed him to actually go into the the arena where they do all their performances, and uh, like five or six of the cast members were there, just kind of entertaining him, taking pictures. That was really cool. And I got a picture with the Dragon Knight, which was really awesome as well. Uh, the last night before we left, we went to the Village Seafood Buffet at the Rio, which Brandon and I went oh, to last man. year. So fucking good. They had the lobster still? They had lobster. I had so much lobster. I probably had like three or four lobsters just myself. Uh, a lot of good sushi. Uh, what's it called when the fish is just by itself? Sashimi. Sashimi. I had a lot of sashimi as well. Um, they have, instead of like soft serve ice cream, which a lot of buffets have, they actually had gelato that they were serving there, which was really good. So, I would highly recommend. I, to me, that's my favorite buffet in Las Vegas. There's a lot of very expensive buffets, like that one at the Caesar's Palace. Deschanel or something. No, but ba- ba- Bachanel. Is it Desch? Bas- I want to say Baccarat, but that's I know that's a card game. So I maybe think it's Bachanel. Oh, Bacchanal or, so, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, you're right. That was the most expensive one, if I remember correctly, and it was good. I'm not yeah. saying it wasn't good, but as far as like value and and what you get, I think the, the Village Seafood Buffet at the Rio is probably my favorite. We also went to the Pinball Hall of Fame one day. It was, like, seriously within walking distance from our resort, so we probably should have gone more, but we just went one day. Uh, we were playing a Turtles in Time arcade game, probably, like, 25, 30 minutes together. We got pretty far on that before we decided to stop feeding at quarters. Uh, there was also, as you can imagine by the name, a shitload of uh, pinball games. I played some ACDC pinball, some WWF Royal Rumble pinball, some Street Fighter 2 pinball, but my favorite was the Shack Attack pinball. <laughs> it was heck of fun, dude. Like, the Street Fighter 2 one was probably creatively, like, it most appealed to me, but the, the flippers weren't quite strong enough to get the ball up on some of the ramps, which I is kind of a letdown. But the Shack Attack one was actually in good working order, and there was this uh, basketball room that, like, 
it like rotated from left to right and there was a ramp that you could shoot the ball up and it would just fire into the 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 rim and you get of course bonus points whenever you made it in i thought that was really cool it was it was fun it was a fun design and it was a the announcer on the game was fun funny too he's like shoot the basket go for three it was just it was a lot it was a very fun game so if you ever get a chance play the shack attack pinball game did you know that there's this old school Hercules game where it's so big that it's not a little ball bearing pinball? It's a billiard ball. It's a cue I saw ball. That. Really? Yeah. No, I've never seen I that. I saw that on Reddit today. They did have a, a Metallica pinball game there, which was like, it was the most expensive one. I think it was like a dollar for three balls. Oh, wow. And it was like segregated from the other ones. Like it was kind of like the, I think it was the one they used for competition. And there was a Asian dude there with glasses on. He had a fanny pack on, <laughs> and he was sitting at a bar stool. And he was there for like the whole time that I was there, just feeding quarters into wow. that thing. So he was like a pinball enthusiast, I guess. But it, it had a cool soundtrack. It was cool watching him play and like getting all the different music from uh, from Metallica. It was cool. I also went to a uh, King's Liquors preseason game at the MGM Grand. Uh, I bought the cheapest tickets available, like, the day before the game, which was, like, top row, the absolute worst seats that you could buy. I think they were, like, 26 bucks or something like that. When I go to games by myself, I tend to, like, scout the lower sections to see where I might be able to sneak down. And I found some seats, like, right at midcourt, like, maybe two or three rows up. And I was like, I have not seen anyone sit there for, like, the first quarter and a half. So right around halftime, that's when people are going to get their dr their drinks and going to the bathroom and whatever. So the ushers don't really have a chance to check tickets or, you know, because there's so much movement going on. I figured that's when I was going <laughs> to make my move. So right at, right at halftime, I snuck by the usher and I was like seriously at half court, like feet away from the, from the radio broadcast. Like I saw Grant Napier right there. He does all the Sacramento Kings games. And the the Lakers bench was right here, and the Kings bench was right here. It was so awesome. That's tight. I saw that you were pretty close. I was I was heck of close. I was like seriously two or three rows up. So uh, they didn't even like because usually they catch people, but they no one didn't. fucked with me. I, I I just I just kind of stayed incognito. I ha I had my baseball hat on. I tried mm -hmm. tried to make sure that I didn't make eye contact with anyone because I know if I looked at an usher, they'd be like, mm, yeah. I didn't see that guy there before. But yeah, I. No one fucked with was me. Was Tim there with you? No, oh. he was playing cards, which is pretty much what he was doing the whole time. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, the game was much more enjoyable. It was a really intense game, actually. Even though it was a preseason game, Kings-Lakers is always a good game. Uh, the crowd was somewhat diverse, especially in this section. There was a guy who was like really rooting hard for the Kings there. It made, it made the, the whole experience much more enjoyable. And it, to add to that, the Kings actually won at the buzzer by uh, tipping by Ray McCallum. It was a lot of fun. A um, couple more bullets I wanted to hit on. So as far as my gaming experience, I played some live poker at the MGM Grand in the Excalibur. I was doing all right, doing up, up a little bit, <clears throat> and then finally I lost it all. Uh, dude flopped a set of fives against my ace 10 when it, it was a 10 high board. So I had top pair, top kicker, got it all in. And of course I lost to the set of fives. I didn't play too much, uh, live poker cause I did play mostly online poker, but that's pretty much all that happened there. Uh, I only played blackjack for about 10 minutes. I was at the MGM grand and I needed a hundred dollars to buy into this poker game. I only had 60 bucks. So I thought I'd try to win 40 bucks playing blackjack, the cheapest table. Uh, required a fifteen dollar minimum bet, which is higher than I ever played. Yeah. I, I always looked for a five dollar minimum bet. That oh, was not yeah. going to happen. It was like a Thursday or Friday night. It was not going to happen. So I figured, what the fuck? I'll just sit down with my sixty bucks. Hopefully, I get lucky. Ten minutes later, I had a hundred and twenty bucks, and I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. So I bought another poker game and proceeded to lose my hundred and twenty bucks. But whatever. Didn't make too many sports bets. Uh, the Monday night football game when I got there was Steelers versus Texans. Who would you take in that match? Texans. Of course. And why? Because Steelers suck dick. But why do they suck dick? Because Jeremiah Brandes <laughs> likes them. That's what I have written down. <laughs> <laughs> so I did the same thing. I, I put my money on the Texans. Didn't pay off. Ah. <laughs> so I lost 20 bucks. Whenever I make a sports bet, I almost always bet 20 bucks. So I lost 20 bucks there. Uh, I also bet $20 on some random UFC underdog fighter by the name of Phil Davis. I actually 
uh, re research this one a little bit. Uh, someone told me, or someone I read somewhere, that uh, Phil Davis was a pretty good bet at a 270 underdog. Basically, that means that if you bet $100, you would win $270. So it's like 2.7 to 1 that you're getting paid. So that bet actually did come through, and I won $54 off of that. Altogether, $74 because I got my $20 back. The only other bet I made was for the Giants to win the World Series, which I'm happy to say that that one paid off as well. Hell yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, it did. <laughs> and I, I was telling Nick, man, I don't usually watch Giants games, but I'll watch them if they go to the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> You're like that guy that Matt Lucas hates. Yeah. <laughs> You should, you should have posted that on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> you would have loved that. Uh, so I still have that ticket in my wallet, actually, because they, the, they won the World Series after I returned from Vegas. I was reading online that you can actually cash the ticket at any MGM casino, which there's a couple of them in Reno as well. So I usually make it up to Reno maybe once every month or so. So next time I'm up there, I'll, I'll, I'll cash that ticket. How good's the ticket for? It's 41. Oh, you mean how long? I think they're good for like six months. Oh, okay. But I'm not entirely sure, but I'm sure I'll cash it in. I don't like giving away money. Of course not. <laughs> it only paid off 41 bucks on a $20 bet, but I wanted to support my team. So I made that bet as soon as I got there. So that was my Vegas trip. Cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Dang, that was heck scary. That was from The Grudge. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Halloween was pretty fun. Nick came over and Rosa uh, trick-or-treated. Uh, as soon as my mom got there, you know, the first question I asked her was? No. How <laughs> was Junior? How was Junior? <laughs> <laughs> and it took her a minute to remember. Like, who's Junior? And my uncle was like, oh, you mean Junior from back at the apartment complex? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> It was Logan's birthday party, too, so he got some cash from Uncle Ron. He's like, I gave you some singles. And then <laughs> he was like, you can make it rain, but you're not going to go to any of those kind of clubs. And like, I'll show you how to make it rain, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> and so I walked over there. <laughs> and it was like a 20 and five ones. And I started making it rain on Mia. <laughs> And Karen was like, you didn't notice the room get real quiet? <laughs> I was like, no. Uh -huh. And then she was like, you're making it rain on a two-year-old. <laughs> you, you know, whenever we took my kids trick-or-treating, they were like, run and fall and all this shit. Yeah. Rosa was just like, I love trick-or-treating. And just like walking along, trick-or-treating. Uh -huh. And it was real um, nice to see that because none of my other kids were like that. They just wanted to go for the candy. <laughs> So, it was fun. So what was Logan's reaction to Rosa professing her love to him? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, they were walking, and it was like just me, Nick, Melissa, and the, Logan and Rosa. And we were walking back to my house, and Rosa just goes, Logan, I like you. <laughs> and Logan looked back at me. I was like, like had his mouth open. <laughs> and I was like... Don't leave him hanging. Don't leave her hanging. <laughs> Tell her you like her back, like as a friend. Uh -huh. So he walks up to her. He's like, Rosa. No, he said, I, I like you. And Rosa started talking about like a dog or something. <laughs> <laughs> and so he looked back at me like, is that good enough? And I said, no. Get her attention. <laughs> and I said, and then he walked up to her and says, Rosa, I like you too. And she's like, okay. And started talking about something else. <laughs> It was hilarious. <laughs> You're really pushing this union of the Jones and the Bartholomews. <laughs> That's right. Do we have Jerk of the Week? I don't. I have one. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. So my Jerk of the Week is a specific cunt who I never spoke a word to. Her cunt-like attitude was not experienced by me, but by a former Jerk of the Week, my brother-in-law, Tim. Is Tim Tim's wife? <laughs> no I'm not even going to go there Tim was not on any sort of budget it seemed I barely saw him at the resort he was almost always at a casino playing poker or table games wow. most of his time was spent at the Aria or the MGM Grand the Aria Aria is pretty sweet it's dude. fancy it is you have to be a baller to play there like every table regardless of the time is $25 that's why I said Aria like that <laughs> Their poker room is sick, though. I mean, it's always full. So that's why he played there. And the smallest game you can buy in for, like a 1-3 game, uh, 
he actually did pretty good there, but it's above my head. I, I, I can't afford to play there. What's that 1-3 game? Uh, $1, $3 blinds, which usually means that you have to buy in for like $200. 200 yeah. Occasionally I would rail him, which in poker terms basically means that I would just watch him play. I saw him getting a hand with his cunt. The board was king high and he shoved all in. She thought about it for about five minutes. Everyone at the table was just kind of watching her, thinking about calling a clock. Mm-hmm. When, when you call a clock on someone, it basically means that they have a minute to make a decision or their hand is folded. So anyway, the, this broad was in a hand. Uh, she thought for at least five minutes, and she finally decided to call my brother-in-law. Uh, he flipped over his hand, kind of embarrassed, a little bit sheepish, showed his, that he had pocket jacks. Said, I've just got pocket jacks, knowing that he's probably beaten because the board was king high. If she's calling him, she must have something that beats pocket jacks. She looked back at, back at her hand and disgustedly mucked her card with that That's showing heck of funny. <laughs> so after doing my uh, own thing for a few hours, because like I said, he spent most of his time there. It was, le- was kind of late at night. I went back and checked on him, and I, you know, I said I was ready to go. If you're ready to go, we can go. We can ride back together. There was a lot of times where I'd actually leave the casino, and he'd come back in a on a cab or something. He'd take a cab ride back. So that that particular night, he was ready to go. So we uh, were going to ride back together. But before he left, he had a brief discussion with the cunt. He told her, "Hey, I'm sorry if I got lucky in that hand when I went all in. If you don't mind my asking, what did you call me with?" This is when the cunt became the cunt. She said, Honestly, dude, I have no fucking clue why you played your hand that way. I only called you because your play doesn't make any sense. Why would you shove all in with one pair in that spot? She was being completely rude. And remember, this hand occurred three or four hours earlier. Get the fuck over it. It's poker, you cunt. Tim has a bit of an anxiety, and he was on edge for the rest of the night. He had a, we had a long walk because we were uh, actually parked in the Planet Hollywood parking lot on that particular evening. He wouldn't stop talking about this bitch. Mm. He just went on and on about how he was just trying to be nice and so much for being nice. I'm never doing that again. So it tainted his view of the world, this cunt did. So random poker playing cunt at the MGM Grand. You are my fucking jerk of the week. Box art trivia? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Tight. All right, so uh, I want you guys to write down what you guys think it is. <laughs> all right. Are you just going to read through them all and then we'll give? Yeah. Okay. Number one. How many are there so I can number my paper? Seven. Okay. Buildings of all shapes and sizes and colors are falling from the sky. <laughs> That's it? That's it. <laughs> are falling from the sky? Okay. Oh, I know. That's Daniel LaRusso. This is the Karate Kid. (laughs) (laughs) Number three. Didn't we do this one last time? Is this a sequel? (laughs) Oh, man. That's Mega Man running away from a bomb blast. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Giant turtles with weapons are being beaten up by a laser shooting stegosaurus. <laughs> you got it? You can't just go. I don't even fucking know. <laughs> I'm okay, go ahead. This, number four. This looks like an Egyptian game. Wait, wait, this is number five, isn't it? I have five. Or number five. (laughs) This looks like an Egyptian game, like a futuristic Egypt, like a futuristic Egyptian game with King Tut protecting his castle against an invader. Number six. It looks like a... Go ahead. It looks like a club of fiends invading the cover. Dracula and that girl from the Titan movie are on here. What? <laughs> I don't know that one. I don't even have a guess. Okay. And the last one. Arnold the Governator and Sylvester Stallone are fighting aliens. 
Okay. Who knows what number one is? I guess Tetris. I guess Tetris. That's too. right. Number two? I guess Black Belt. <laughs> the Karate Kid? Uh, Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number three. Did, didn't did we do this one last yeah. time? Is this a sequel? That's Mega Man running away from a bomb blast. Bomberman? Bomberman. Bomberman. Giant turtles with weapons are being beat up by a laser shooting <laughs> Stegosaurus. I put Gyromite. I put TMNT, but I didn't know if it was two or the arcade, the, the original. It was TMNT, the Manhattan Project. Oh, okay. It's a Triceratops, yeah. but... <laughs> Close. <laughs> this looks like an Egyptian game, like a futuristic Egypt game with King Tut protecting his castle against, a giant, <laughs> against an invader. <laughs> I put Karnov. I put Solomon's Key. Mega Man 4. I don't know what that cover looks like. It's got Mega Man with... Uh, Pharaoh Man. Oh, okay. And I was like, out of all the fucking games, you don't know this is a Mega Man? I've been saying <laughs> this is a Mega Man like 20 other times. <laughs> Six. It looks like a club of fiends invading the cover. Dracula and that girl from the Titan movie are on here. <laughs> I, I didn't have a guess on that one. Uh, Monster Party? Monster Party. Oh, okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Sylvester Stallone fighting aliens. I have Contra. Oh, I didn't hear the Sylvester Stallone part. I put Total Recall. It's Contra. That's fun. Yeah. Maybe I'll do SNES next time. Oh, nice. Alright, so that'll do it for, uh, for episode 69. Woo! Halloween edition of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy haunting. <laughs>